In section 12.2, we'll look at arithmetic sequences and series. Let's begin. In section 12.2, we look at arithmetic sequences and series. So basically, arithmetic means linear. So these are sequences and series that come from having linear type terms. So let's go ahead and define arithmetic sequence. And this is a sequence. where each successive term is found by adding the same number To the previous term. And this same number is called the common difference. We usually symbolize that by a D. So basically what you can think of as you have sort of the first term, A1, and then you're going to take a1 and you're going to add the common difference to that. So that successive term, the second term, was found by taking the first term, the previous term, a1, and adding the common difference, d. And then the next one would be found by taking the previous term, a1 plus d, and then adding another d. And so this is where we get a1 plus 2d. Right, if you want to think of it like that. And then to get the next term, we take another d and add it in there. So that would be 3d and then a1 plus 4d, etc. And so that is how you build up sequences uh, that are arithmetic sequences. Example 1. Determine if the following are arithmetic sequences. Well, there'll be arithmetic sequences if every time you take the difference between two consecutive terms, you get the same common difference. So the difference between 7 and 10 is a 3, and so I'm writing it here as if I were doing 10 minus 7, so I get a 3, and then 10 plus what number is 13? That's a 3, 3 to 16, that's a 3, etc. Since these are all 3s, then yes, this is an arithmetic sequence. And the common difference is 3. In part B, we look at the first difference, and that's 2. The next difference is 3. The next difference is 4. The next difference is 5. So this is not arithmetic. Because the differences between consecutive terms are all different. Let's look at the formula for the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. So let's go ahead and give you the formula, and then we'll sort of explain where this all comes from. So the nth term is a sub n is equal to a sub 1, the first term, plus n minus 1 times d, where d is the common difference. And basically what we're looking at here is you can recall that the sequences are basically functions where the domain is integers. So we can have an n-axis where the numbers on the n-axis are 1, 2, 3, 4, all these positive integers, continuing on. And then you would get a point here that corresponds to the first term, so that's a1 and then you get another point, a2, and then a3, etc. 
Now, the determining factor for an arithmetic sequence is that every term is found by adding the same number to the sequence term uh, before it. So this difference here is D, and then the difference here is D. And since you're moving over 1 each time you do this, basically this is like a little slope. And so that's why it looks like uh, D times uh, some number, N minus 1, and then plus the A1. It's, it's very much similar to the point-slope formula, where D is the slope and the N is the X, but you're starting at this point where it is sort of the point when X would be equal to 1. But if we go ahead and, and think about it in that way, then what we can do is we can sort of create a new formula. And you won't see this in many textbooks. But this is sort of a new uh, intuitive way of sort of thinking about it. What I want to do to create my new formula is I want to create a fake term in the sequence, which I'll call the zeroth term. The zeroth term would be sort of the term that existed before the sequence started, over here when n would be equal to zero. And we can just put in that point right there to correspond to a sub zero. Well, in this formulation, a sub zero acts like the y-intercept in a linear function. And you recall that the linear function is y equals mx plus b. So this is sort of natural to go ahead and use this formulation for our arithmetic sequence because the y is really a sub n, the m is d, the x is sort of the n, and then the b, the y-intercept, would be a sub naught. So that sort of corresponds to this way here. Now if I rewrite it to look uh, similar to the previous formula, it's a sub n is equal to a naught plus n times d. So the difference here is the following. In the previous one, we sort of based it on the first term, and so to do that, we have to take n minus 1, because it was the first term. If I base it on the zeroth term, then I don't have to subtract 1. I'm essentially subtracting 0. And so it's just a naught plus n times d. Depending on your application, this is sort of the preferred formula to use, but this one is the one that you see in textbooks all the time. I'll show you an example, an example two using both methods. Find the 16th term of the sequence 3, 9, 15, 21. So using the, the first formula I gave you, a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d, I need to find a sub 16. So n is equal to 16 because we're finding the 16th term. The first term in my sequence is 3, plus n is 16, minus 1, and then the common difference here is 6. So we're going to multiply this by 6. And you work this out, and you get 3 plus 15 times 6, which is 93. Now let's see how it works in the new formula. Let me start off by writing out the sequence here. To use the new formula, I need to create a previous term, the zeroth term, but it's based on the common difference of 6. So what term would be before 3 if I were allowed to have such a term? Well, it would be 3 minus 6, which is negative 3. So my formula here is a sub 16 is equal to negative 3 plus n is 16 times the common difference of 6. And this is also equal to 93. So it's just however you want to think about it. I like the second one. 
uh, because I think it's a more natural relationship to linear equations, which is really where arithmetic sequences uh, come into play. Example three, what term is 24 in the sequence negative 16, negative 14, negative 12, negative 10, etc.? So let's go with my new formula. A sub n is equal to a naught plus n times d. And we need to figure out what the imaginary zeroth term would be. So everything's going up by twos here. So it's arithmetic. So if there was a term that went up by two to get me negative 16, that term must have been negative 18. So 24 is equal to negative 18 plus n, the number I'm looking for, times the common difference of 2. All right, solve for n. So 24 plus 18 is 42. 42 is equal to 2n. So n is equal to 21. So 24 is the 21st term. Example 4. Sequence a sub n is arithmetic, with a7 is equal to 9 and a13 equal to 39. Find the nth term formula for the sequence. So remember that the common difference is basically like the slope of the line for the arithmetic sequence. So I can use a formula that's very much like our slope formula. So recall that the slope formula was m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Well, in terms of sequences, the y terms are the sequence values themselves. So I can do a sub 13 minus a sub 7, and then the x terms are the indices. So this would just be 13 minus 7 themselves. And then I just work this out. So a sub 13 was 39. A sub 7 is 9, and 13 minus 7 is 6. So this gives us 30 over 6, which is equal to 5. And then I can set up another equation to find the initial term. So this would be 5, which is my common difference is equal to, and I'll just pick a sub 7. So a sub 7 minus a naught divided by 7 minus 0. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for the initial term, or the, in this case the zeroth term, and I'm going to use one of the pieces of information that I already have, the information about a sub 7. So a sub 7 was 9. a sub naught is what I'm looking for, and then divided by 7. So to solve this, I'll cross multiply. 7 times 5 is 35. That's equal to 9 minus a naught. Move the 9 over. We get 26 is equal to negative a naught. So a naught is equal to negative 26. And then I can use my expression. a sub n is equal to a naught plus n d. And that's going to give me a sub n is equal to negative 26 plus n times the common difference of 5. And then the easier way to write this, or at least more elegant way to write this, is 5n minus 26. Our next topic is the sum of an arithmetic series. So a series is just a sum of terms from a sequence. So a sequence is just the list of terms. The series is the summation of that. So let's go ahead and develop the formula here. So let S sub n be the sum 
of the terms of the arithmetic sequence A sub n. Then, what do we have? Well, S sub n is going to be the sum of these terms. So it's going to be A sub 1 plus A sub 2 plus A sub 3 plus dot 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 all the way up to A sub n. Now this is going to be equal to, and I'm going to expand on each of these terms using the nth formula, nth term formula. So this will be a sub 1 plus, well how did we get to a sub 2? We took a sub 1 plus 1 times d. And then how did we get to a sub 3? We took a sub 1 plus 2 times d. And then a sub 4 would be 3 times d, etc. And that gets us up to this last term, this a sub n. And how did we get to that? Well, that's a sub 1 plus, and it's not n times d, because we're always 1 less in the number of d's that we've added. So it's actually a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. See, and you can think about that because right here, for the first term, we actually added 0 times d, and then for the second term, we added 1d, for the third term, we added 2d's, so for the nth term, we add n minus 1d's. So it's always one off. All right, now what can I do with this? Well, first thing you want to notice is that every section here has an a sub 1, so I can move all the a sub 1's and group them together here at the front. a sub 1 plus a sub 1 plus a sub 1 plus dot 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 plus a sub 1. Well that's nice, but the question is how many a sub 1's were there? And the answer is there are n of them. So this is n times a sub 1. Because there are n terms in my sequence. Plus, and then what's left over? Well, we have no d's in the first term. Then we have 1d, and then we have 2d, plus 3d, plus all the way up to n minus 1 times d. I can factor out all of those d's. So here I'm going to have a sub 1 times n plus d times 1 plus 2 plus dot 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 all the way to n minus 1 that is going to be equal to a sub 1 times n plus d times and remember from the last section we had a formula for adding positive consecutive integers starting with 1. And that was to take the last term times by the next term divided by 2. So this would be n minus 1 times n divided by 2. Notice that both terms there have an n, so I can factor out the n. That leaves me with a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d over 2, just by rearranging the terms a little bit. My next goal is to factor out a 2 from the inside part, but the a sub 1 did not have a 2, so I'm going to give it a 2 by multiplying both the top and the bottom by 2. And that leaves me with 2 a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. But that can be split up. And we get n over 2 times a sub 1 plus the other a sub 1 plus 
n minus 1 times d. And the reason I want to do that is so that I can have a sub 1 and then a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d, which you will recognize as the nth term of the sequence. So the formula is n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. And basically what the formula says is that you take the number of terms, divide that by 2, and you multiply it by the sum of the first term plus the last term. Let's look at example 5. Find the sum, 2 plus 4 plus 6 all the way up to 100. So in order to use my S sub n formula here, I need to know how many terms there are. One way to look at that is to visualize what the indexing is here. The first term is 2, the second term is 4, the third term is 6, the fourth term is 8, etc. So what term is the hundredth, uh, is uh, 100 going to be? What term of a sequence is that going to be? Well, it's going to be the 50th term. So that must mean there are 50 numbers since I started with 1 and went all the way up to 50. So take 50 divided by 2, and then the first term was a 2, the last term was 100. Work out this multiplication. We get 25 times 102, which is 2550. Example 6, 11 plus 15 plus 19 all the way up to 43. Well, this one doesn't work out as well. It wasn't in a, in a straight linear pattern starting with what should be recognized as 1, 2, 3, etc. Uh, but we can still figure this out. Uh, what I want to do is I want to figure out what the common difference is. And the common difference is 4. Then I'm going to set this up as a slope. So it's a sub n minus a naught divided by n minus 0. I need to go back and figure out what the term before would have been. Subtracting 4 from 11, it turns out to be 7. So 4 is equal to the last term, 43, minus the zeroth term, 7 divided by n, which is the number I'm looking for. I need to figure out how many numbers are in my sequence. So let me cross multiply. I get 4n is equal to 36. So n is equal to 9. So there are 9 terms in my sequence. Next, I'll find s sub 9, the sum of the arithmetic series with nine terms. So I get 9 over 2 times the first term, 11, plus the last term, 43. This gives me 9 over 2 times 54. I can divide 54 by 2, and that gets me 27. And 9 times 27 is 243. 